What's up, fam? Welcome back to another episode with R Lounge. People often say things like, blood is thicker than water, or you can't choose your family. And often, these types of statements are used to justify a decision to tolerate mistreatment by a family member. Today on R Lounge, we get a taste of what exactly people can tolerate. Up first, we see that not everything should be shared on social media. Mother-in-law tells my husband she feels bad for him for being married to me. I could write a book on all the things that have happened, but here's the short context. My husband's parents are divorced. Mother-in-law was never close to, sad, and hates her ex-husband. She was extremely codependent on my husband. There was always red flags, but once I became pregnant, that's when everything really changed. My husband cut her off for their own reasons, and I never said a word. He doesn't talk to his sister, she's on drugs. His dad was an absent father, and he never really had a relationship with him to begin with. My husband hasn't talked to them since before our baby was born 10 months ago, and they haven't reached out. Even though they both knew he was military, and I was alone for an entire month after he was born. There's a lot more to this, but that's a story for a different day. He started talking to his mother again, and she met our son, and yes, things were extremely awkward. But I still saw her for my son's sake. We don't upload pictures of our son to social media. We have a few from when he was a newborn and the back of his head. Well, I look on WhatsApp and my husband's father's profile picture is a picture of my son, which obviously we've never sent him before. I kindly messaged him and asked him to take it down. He ignored me. I sent him another message calling him out for not making an effort to be in my son's life, yet making that his profile pic. He ignored me, so I reported the picture and had it removed. So he decided to take another picture of my son and upload it as his picture. He's a piece of crap. Anyways, the only person we sent this picture to was his mom. Every time we sent her a picture, we asked her not to send it to them. Constantly, my husband kept saying that. And she first tried to blame it on his aunt when we knew for a fact that it was her. She was the only one who had the dang picture. Well, she later admits she sent it to her daughter and she sent it to him. So I called her out on it, nicely, saying in the future, please don't send them pictures. And if they want to see pictures, to ask me or my husband. She ignored me. For a week. A week goes by. She texts my husband something and he asks her why she ignored my text. She then says I was disrespectful and that was uncalled for. After that, he called her and they started fighting. He hung up and this is what she texts him. I'm disrespectful for setting a boundary for my son. Okay. She says, yes, this is a goodbye, quoting her spelling. I got my way and cut him off from all his family, which I never did and actually encouraged him to talk to them. You want to be a puppet? Be a puppet. I feel bad for you and can see how happy you are. I really see how sad you are. I love you and my son's name, but I can't watch this happen to you anymore. Not sure what she's talking about. He's the happiest he's ever been considering we just bought our first house and have a baby. Grow some balls. Using your son to hurt or control others is in poor taste. And so he blocked her. We live in a different state than her. I'm just wondering how the F do we move past this? And is there ever a chance we move past this? Would you allow your child to be in this psychopath's life? I blocked her on social media. Although it's never easy, it seems necessary, OP. Just because people are blood doesn't make them good for us. Sometimes cutting family ties is the healthiest thing you can do. In fact, Many people experience a great sense of relief when they ended a relationship with a family member. People tolerate toxic relationships because they think family is supposed to remain in contact with one another. They might have hope the other person will change or fear that the other individual can't survive without them. No matter the reason, maintaining a toxic relationship can have serious consequences on your well-being. Even if your negative relationships don't lead to major physical or mental health problems, they are still distressing. A toxic relationship requires a lot of time and energy, and it can cause you to feel stressed overwhelmed, and exhausted much of the time. If you think you can tolerate it, OP, and that it is in the best interest of you and your child, then it's possible to make it work. But it won't be easy, and boundaries and clear expectations have to be made. Tell us your thoughts in the comments below, while we check in with the community. On Mundane Spirit Surprise 9483, there is no way in hell that woman would have anything to do with my children. Obviously, she is very toxic, or you wouldn't have cut her off so many times. She has shown you who she is, believe her. Move on with your lives and go no contact with her. You have your own lives to live, and to live in peace, not with a toxic mother-in-law. Listen, 
Life is too short. Up next, a deal with the devil. Mother-in-law is actually the devil? So my mother-in-law hates me. I've done nothing wrong in the five years I've been with her son, but you just know when someone doesn't like you and she makes it very obvious. I, 34 female, have a daughter, 15, from a previous relationship. I was young when I had her and brought her up alone and I've done a dang good job. My mother-in-law never asked me about my daughter, never asked how she is or how she is getting on at school. She doesn't even speak to her when she's around her. She once told my husband that my daughter was rude to her because she didn't say hello to my mother-in-law. My daughter was 11 at the time and didn't even see her. Anyway, my husband and I have recently had a baby boy, seven months, and I've noticed my mother-in-law already starting to talk to him. Oh, look, mommy didn't pack enough baby wipes. Oh, you'll be frozen in that outfit, etc., etc. This is really pissing me off. My husband and I don't want our son to watch TV or phones, iPads, and we have made this very clear, but she keeps saying to him, we will watch cartoons and it will be our secret. I'm so close to just telling her to shut the F up and respect my boundaries, but she just has this manipulative way about her and says she's only joking. How can I let her know that she has to back down? This woman is a narcissist, so I need to be pretty clever. My husband sees her for what she is, but since his father died, she is his only family, so we can't just cut her out. Sorry for the long post. As a narcissist loves to talk about themselves and is always looking for any excuse to do so, OP, it can be very helpful to ask them their opinion on things. They will like to feel needed or wanted and will love to talk about their experience. Plus, you may even find it helpful to see something from their point of view, which can help you feel more familiar with them too. Comfortable Gas 798 from the community says, every time she disparages you through talking to the baby, dish it back to her. In a sing-song voice, that mean old Grammy is gonna find herself in a timeout if she ever tells you to keep secrets from your mommy and daddy. Yes, she will. Oh, yes, she will. Anytime she uses that tactic, just counter it. If she gets upset, I was joking, just like you. If you can't stand the heat, don't light the match. Momplicated Wolf also chimes in. There are no secrets from Mama. Grandma will never have the opportunity to keep secrets from Mama because she will never be alone with you. Also, favoritism is a hard no. If she can't treat them equally, she can't be around them at all. That crap is poison to children. Both of them. This next mother-in-law has a mommy complex. Mother-in-law telling stepdaughter not to call me mommy. My mother-in-law doesn't speak to my husband and I anymore. It's a long story for another time, but basically she was crossing a lot of boundaries and being toxic. Because of this, she has chosen to only see my stepdaughter when she is with her mom, two days a week. She gladly gives her to mother-in-law almost every week and she spends the night. They go to Disneyland, get tons of toys, clothes, ice cream, etc. For context, my mother-in-law was seeing the kids maybe once every two months before the argument. She had full access to pick them up anytime she wanted, but chose not to very frequently. She also lied to my husband's entire family and said that he wasn't letting her see the kids after the argument. Anyways, now my five-year-old stepdaughter, who I have raised since she turned one, is telling me that her grandma told her to call me by my name and not mommy because I'm not her mommy. By the way, my stepdaughter's mom has no issue with her calling me mom, so why should anyone else? She actually encourages it. Has anyone been through something like this? I'm worried how this could affect my stepdaughter in the future and I don't know what else she might be telling her. I think having a conversation between you, your partner, and your husband's ex should sit down and have a transparent conversation so that you're all on the same page about the mother-in-law. Once expectations are made there, then it's time to approach your mother-in-law about her inappropriate actions towards your stepdaughter. If she doesn't cooperate, then boundaries have to be enforced for the sake of your stepdaughter's well-being. Chrisanya83 in the community says, You and your husband need to be on the same page about this before anything else. Talk to him, and the two of you should talk to your daughter. The OP replies, We are both completely on the same page, thankfully, but not quite sure how to talk to her about it since she's so young. Glum Asparagus thinks, You, husband, and ex need to get together and discuss this issue about his mother. If your husband and ex are okay with your stepdaughter calling you mom, then mother-in-law needs to back the hell off. Mother-in-law is interfering in the family dynamic, all you have managed to cultivate, and it could be disastrous down the line when your stepdaughter gets older. Mother-in-law purposely doing this to alienate your stepdaughter from you. This can be a serious issue and needs to be addressed now. Mother-in-law needs a long time out from being able to see your stepdaughter on a regular basis, but that call has to come from her parents, and not you, unfortunately. The OP replies, Mother-in-law is sending over tons of clothes, toys, and babysitting. 
My stepdaughter's mom has another child a year younger and is struggling financially. So I honestly think it's hard for her to say no. And mother-in-law knows that and takes advantage of it. She's very manipulative. My stepdaughter's mom has said she will continue to let her see her, but won't let her spend the night. That was months ago, and she has been spending the night almost every weekend. This next significant other still collects allowance from his granny. Am I wrong in thinking this is just really weird? Okay, so I want to preface this by saying I adore my husband. He is truly my soulmate. He loves me unconditionally and is a wonderful partner to me and dad to our toddler. I have always thought his family was a little annoying, but now after six years together, I'm really seeing it for what it is. So his whole family talks about how his granny is the glue that holds the family together and they would be lost without her. In the first year or two I was with him, I just thought it was a sweet statement about how wonderful she is because she really is a wonderful lady. I can't really criticize her. But six years in, I am realizing what they really mean is they don't know how to do anything for themselves because she does it. Until now, husband got with me, he didn't even know how to do any laundry. He would take it to her to wash and dry, which I couldn't believe somebody in their 30s would be doing. I now realize she also does the laundry for almost the entire family. They all bring it to her and she does it. And she handles the entire family's finances. Like, we've been married for four years now and I'm still not on my husband's bank account. We had separate bank accounts, really out of laziness and not really having time to go to the bank and consolidate them. He's not hiding money from me. He goes over finances when I ask. But I've always had a separate bank account. Well, last year, I told him that I really felt like it would just be so much easier if we consolidated it into one bank account. The reason being, I stopped working to stay at home and take care of our toddler. So since I wasn't bringing in any income, I didn't need a separate bank account and I really needed to just have equal access to his. He agreed with me on this, but we went to the bank and I found out I couldn't be added to the account. The reason? His granny is the other account holder. I asked him about this and he said that she has just always been on there since he was a teenager. She doesn't manage his finances or anything, but she has just always been the other account holder. I told him that that's really odd for somebody to be well into adulthood and still have a parent or grandparent as part of their bank account. And it really needed to be on the bank account, not her. He agreed with me. But it's been months now. I'm still not on there because he hasn't found a time to go with her to the bank and get her name off of it because she lives an hour and a half away. This means that I can only go shopping or spend money or whatever if I have his debit card. I don't have my own. I know your instinct would be to think he is financially controlling me, but it's really not the case. It's just that he has ADHD, has major executive dysfunction, and honest to God keeps forgetting the rare time he has time off from work to go up there and do it. But I'm sick of this. I think it's so bizarre for everybody and his family to rely on his granny for literally everything. And me, as his wife, does not have easy access to our finances. Please tell me I'm not wrong in thinking this is just really bizarre behavior. My husband is 36 years old. I'm tired of it, and I want to put my foot down and say no, take Tom off work, get her name off the account, and put me on there so I can have access to the bank. It sounds like his granny is a huge enabler, OP. If your husband hasn't been expected to take care of himself this far, how is he going to take care of you and your family once she's out of the picture? Without the proper life skills learned through experience and trial and error, everything could come crumbling down, one way or the other. Yes, you adore your husband, but it's time to show him a little bit of tough love. He needs to take responsibility and think of the future. Once she's gone, expectations might be placed on you to take care of things that she normally did. Time to put your foot down. Texas, Texas, Texas one chimes in. In your shoes, I'd drive husband to the bank and withdraw all but $5. Drive to a different bank and open a joint banking account. If you won't do that without granny's approval of participation, then the issue is bigger. Erica Foss 1987 says, This is not how a grown man should manage his affairs. That is, unless Granny is paying large sums into the account at regular intervals. Why don't you open a separate account in both your names, drain the joint account with Granny, and move it so you take control of your own money? I have a feeling he is frightened to ask Granny to have her name removed from the account. Maybe there is a side to her you have not seen yet. Also, check if anyone else in the family has this arrangement, siblings, cousins, etc. Thank you for joining us today on Our Lounge. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on your next video. If you have feedback on today's content, please let us know in the comments below. Until next time.